Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies along with some extra goodies. This fly is called a bluegill because it's supposed to imitate, well, a small bluegill. Profile, coloration, big eyes, a little bit of flash, and some movement. The bluegill fly has it all. Start by picking up one of the long shanked hooks and getting it firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Load a bobbin with a spool of white uni thread. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and after taking a dozen or so wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Wrap back over your wraps to build up an ample thread base, ending with your thread an eye length and a half behind the hook eye. Pull one of the clusters of brown Zelon fibers free from the hank. Fold the fibers in half, then snip the formed loop and set one half aside. Notice there's a tapered end and a snipped off end. Separate the fibers in half lengthwise and flip one half 180 degrees. Give the clump a little twist between your fingertips, which will merge the fibers back together. This will produce tapers at both ends of the clump. Place the midpoint of the fibers on top of the hook shank at the location of your tying thread and take tight wraps to secure it. Pull the forward pointing fibers back over top of the rearward pointing fibers. Build a wedge of thread to initially hold the fibers back, then take wraps over top of them to keep them pinned back. End with your tying thread in front of the fibers. Flip the fly over for easier access to the underside of the hook. Pick up the other half of the Zelon, which you set aside earlier, and fold it in half. Then snip that loop and set one of those segments aside. There's no need to taper both ends of these clumps. Locate the midpoint of one, place it on top of the hook shank, and take wraps of tying thread to secure it. Again, pull the forward pointing portion rearward and jam thread wraps in at the base. This time, however, don't take wraps over top of the material. You just want it to be propped up. Flip the fly over and tie in a second small clump in the same manner as the first. Here, those wedge type wraps should be located immediately behind the hook eye. You want these fibers to be swept back just a little. Flip the fly over again to expose the underside of the shank. Pull a small amount of orange Zelon fibers free from the hank and double them over to form a loop, then snip it. Fold one of these halves in two and snip that loop. Basically, what you've done is produced enough clumps of orange fibers to tie four bluegill flies. Place the midpoint of one of these clumps against what is now the underside of the hook shank and take wraps of tying thread to bind it down. Then, pull everything rearward and take thread wraps to hold all the fibers both top and bottom back. Flip the fly back to its normal position. Pull a dozen or so pearl angel hair fibers free from the hank. Smooth them out into fairly straight strands, then place the midpoint of those strands against the near side of the hook at the location of your tying thread. Bind the angel hair down on the near side of the fly using tight wraps of thread. Flip the fly over so the far side is facing you and pull the remaining angel hair rearward and bind it down. The idea is to have pearl lateral lines on either side of the fly. Take a few more thread wraps to clean up the fly's head, then reach for your whip finish tool and use it to do a four or five turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. A drop of UV Cure resin applied to the thread wraps will make sure they don't come unraveled even after heavy use. Before curing the resin, make sure the hook eye is absolutely clear. You can then use the UV torch to completely harden the resin to attack free touch. Gel super glue works really well for affixing eyes to the fly. A small drop a little ways back from the head of the fly is all you need. Peel one of the 3D eyes from the sheet and place it on top of the adhesive. Hold it for a few seconds so the super glue sets. You can then repeat the same procedure to bond the other eye to the other side of the fly. The eyes should be roughly mirror images of each other. Removing the fly from the vise makes trimming it to shape easier. Use larger tying scissors to first trim the material into a teardrop shape. 
Then with your scissors parallel to the fibers, do a little snipping to feather them. It should now look something like this. A small chip clip really helps when it comes to putting markings on the fly. Using a black permanent marker, produce bands and dots on either side. The bands should be at somewhat regular intervals. The markings don't have to be perfect, just enough to visually break up the fly. And that's the bluegill. It can be simply swung or stripped to produce erratic movement. Either way, it's going to attract attention.